Right, Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Waharakakwadash, Barakatham to Allah Akim, throughout the four winds, laboring in truth and sincerity, and double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, Shalom and Barakatham. Right, let's get into another history lesson. This is uh, called Operation Solomon. So we're going to go into Operation Solomon and we're going to break this down. And let me read this um, first paragraph here. Let me read this. Um, Lord willing, also, that the Lord willing, this video will be edifying. So anyway, Operation Solomon was a covert Israeli military operation in May 24th to 25th, 1991. 24th to, to 25th, 1991, to airlift Ethiopian Jews to Israel. Non flight, non stop flights of 35 Israeli aircraft, including Israeli Air Force C 130s and EIAI -E -I -E -I Boeing 747s, I believe, EI, I believe, yeah. but Boeing 747s, that's an airplane. Hold on. Transported 14,325 Ethiopian Jews to Israel in 36 hours. Right. So this operation happened in 1991. What we're going to do here is dissect Esau's lies. We're going to dissect Esau's lies completely. This is total madness. Right. This is total madness, man. Right. First of all, there's no such thing as an Ethiopian Jew. Ethiopia, Ethi, Ethiops, which the Greek word Ethiops, which means burnt face, right? The Ethiopians literally they look like a dark skinned people, right? They, uh, right? They go back to their their bloodline um, or sea line, which is uh, Kush, right? Which, matter of fact, let's go into this table of nations right quick. And let me explain this too. And the word Jew just goes back to the tribe of Judah. That's it. Which today would be the so-called Negroes here in America. That's it. So you're not Ethiopian. You're what you call a Kushite. Right? People got some nerves, man. Genesis chapter 10 and verse 5. By these, no, let's start at verse 1. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And unto them were sons born after the flood. Right? By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, everyone after his tongue, after their families and their nations. And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizraim, and Put, and Canaan. Right? And the sons of Cush. Right, so Cush was a son of Ham. These are today what which, which you call your Ethiopians. Matter of fact, let's go into it. You're not an Ethiopian, you're a Cushite. That's your biblical nationality, you're a Cushite. The Hebrew is Kawash, not Kush, which is another strike. Right, that's not even Hebrew. All right, Kawash is Hebrew. Kush is just, just that's off. Right, Kush, which means black or blackness. I believe Zephaniah's father was named Kush. Right, but Zephaniah was an Israelite, and Zephaniah's father was also an Israelite. Anyway, let's grab this part right here. The land occupied by the descendants of Kush, located around the southern part of the Nile, Ethiopia. So they're in Ethiopia, and also too. Nimrod, okay, it tells you right here, matter of fact, let's grab this right here. The son of Ham and grandson of Noah and the progenitor of the southernmost peoples located in Africa. <laughs> but they're Cushites, right? And also too, yeah, that was the name of an Israelite too. Kushai, I believe Zephaniah's father was Kushai. Let's double check that right quick. Which, uh, I ain't got to really bring it out, but... 
uh, the word of the Lord, which came unto Zephaniah, the son of Cushai. And I believe that means their blackness. Kawashia, Kawashim, Kawashia. Their blackness, all right. The father of Zephaniah was Zephaniah an Israelite. Anyway, so these people, these um, Cushites, all right, or these people that call themselves Ethiopians, go back to Cush. They're not Israelites. That's a different nationality. Right? But anyway, Operation Solomon, it was uh, uh, what they did. They airlifted these Falashian, was Falashian could also, it can mean, um, oh, shit, I forget. But I know it could mean false, and it could also mean something else. These uh, Falashian Ethiopian Jews to Israel in 1991. That's a violation of the scriptures, totally and completely, right? Let's cut that right quick. Let's go to... Amos, so they call themselves Ethiopian, which is a strike, or Ethiopian Jew, which is another strike, all right, Amos chapter 9, and let's begin in verse 13, but the point is in 15, matter of fact, let's just jump down to the point, and I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land, which I have given them, saith the Lord, Yahweh, Yahweh, Shai. All right, so the Most High is going to plant us in our land, not get airlifted to Israel by some Israelis, right? They don't even call themselves Israelites. They call themselves Israelis, which that's totally off. And by the way, if you want to really, we call ourselves Israelites, which Israelites, Israelitas is, is a Greek word. Or a Latin, but a, a Greek word, but it really is is um is um Yashar Allah, Yashar Allah, Yahi Shar Prince Allah Power, Yashar Allah, the Prince of the Powers. That's Hebrew, right? But ain't no wrong saying Israelite. Oh, I'm an Israelite, All right? But you engage people in a conversation and really tell them who you really are. Okay, my biblical nationality. I'll go back to Yashar Allah. Right, bun, some, some, whatever, you know, Yasharala. Bun, you know, I'm the uh, son of Yasharala, son of whatever perspective tribe I'm from. Me, personally, I don't know, so I can't really tell you. But I know I'm an Israelite because my spirit bears witness with the truth, right? But the Lord said he's going to plant us in our land, right? And I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land, which I have given them, save the Lord thy power. Now, back in the uh, 70s, you had a dude by the name of Ben-Ami, which went to Israel with a group of Israelites, biblical, real biblical Israelites. And he died around, like around, I believe, 2000 and something. But just recently, they were deported. So they were pulled up out of that land, which is really their land. But they were pulled out of it because you got now what you you have imposters living in our land. You got Ishmaelites. You got the Arabs living in Palestine. You got which are Ishmaelites. You got Edomites living in our land. And you have Philosophian Jews or Ethiopian or Cushites living in our land. So you have all imposters living in our land. And that's biblical prophecy found in Joel, the third chapter. And Zechariah 9 and 6, a bastard should dwell in Astod. Matter of fact, let's get that right quick. But just recently, Ben-Ami and his followers just were deported. Ben-Ami's followers were just deported, I believe like a year ago, right? So they got pulled out of that land. Why? Because the Most High is going to bring us there, not us placing ourselves there. So these Israelis made a huge mistake by calling it Operation Solomon and implanting imposters in our land. Cushites, right, what was I going to grab, shit, oh man, what the fuck, man, I forgot what I was going to grab, shit, oh, this is bad, man, I got a bad fucking memory, Salaka, Akim Salaka, was it, I just got Amos, right, let's go back to Amos, maybe my mind will be refreshed, let me see, Verse 15, Amos chapter 9 and verse 15, and I will plant them upon their land, 
and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land, which I have given them, saith the Lord, thy power. So we didn't have to go into that land through a Baffler Declaration or Operation Solomon. The Most High is going to place us in that land. Right? And these Ethiopians, matter of fact, I'm going to I'm gonna go into something. I lost what I was going to grab, but fuck, man. I hate when I do that sh oh, shit, man. Try to explain one point and I forget. Let's type in police brutality, Ethiopians in Israel, right? Police brutality, Ethiopians in Israel. Now, these are supposed to be your neighbors and your brothers and the 12 tribes coming together. All the tribes are there. Why is this shit happening? Let's go and read July 2019, Ethiopian Jews protest in Israel. Tens of thousands of Ethiopian Jewish protesters clashed with Israeli police and blocked at least 15 intersections across Israel. Um, no, let's go into this, the, the July 2019 Ethiopian Jews protest in Israel was a period of unrest initiated by Ethiopian Jews in response to the shooting death of 18-year-old Solomon Tekka at the hands of an Israeli police officer in Kirit Haim Hafe. So Ethiopians are, um, are being discriminated upon over there in Israel. Right? If they're supposed to be the people of God, they're supposed to be one of the 12 tribes. Why is this shit going on in the kingdom? We're not going to do that. Let's prove that. Uh, Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 13. This Isaiah chapter 11. Let's start at verse. Um, let's start at verse. Oh, damn. I don't want to do it, man. It's all right. Let's just start at verse 11. The point is in uh, 13. Too much to read, but I'll read it. And it came to pass, and it, and it shall come to pass, in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which that's happening now. The Lord is recovering us and putting that flesh upon us uh, as Israelites and bringing us to our recollection, our remembrance of who we are as a people. Right? You see, That's why you see brothers all over the world Claiming their per perspective tribes. Oh, I come from the tribe of Judah. I come from the tribe of Ephraim. I come from the tribe of Zebulon. So on and so forth. We could do that because we could prove biblically who we are. We, we identify with the curses. We identify with, with um, just being those people. Simple as that. Right? Recover the remnant of his people. And that remnant is really speaking about the elect. That those that are going to get and understand his truth. Which we know two-thirds of you niggas, two-thirds have to be put to death. And the Most High is going to kill you, right? Which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam. Now, we have Israelites scattered all over the world. But those people uh, don't fit the prophecy as being the Israelites. You got a brother in GMS London that was born in Eritrea right next to Ethiopia. He bears witness with the truth. He's an Israelite. That's the difference. And he calls upon Yahweh when Yahweh was shy. You don't hear these Ethiopian Jews call upon the names of Yahweh when Yahweh was shy. In the Paleo Hebrew, the original tongue. You don't hear them do that. And from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the Isles of the Sea. So the Lord is bringing all the tribes together. Not just um, uh, claiming to be a a, a, um, a Jew, uh, Ethiopian Jew, an Israeli Jew. And first of all, nobody is Israeli. What the hell is an Israeli? Right? And Ethiops means burnt face. That's what, it's a Greek word, which means burnt face, Ethiops. Ethiopia was named, I believe, um, by those Greeks. Really, that land was called the land of Ham or the Cham, uh, hot land or the land of Ham, right? During the time of the Ptolemaic Empire, when they was when they took over the um, the known world at that time, the Seleucid Empire, really the Ptolemaic Empire that was in Africa, they took over that land and they pushed a lot of you uh, Hamites, you Africans down South Africa. 
Now, I'm not saying that you weren't there in Ethiopia already. I'm not saying that. But a lot of you uh, Hamites, a lot of you Africans were pushed down there. All right? We're not a lot. Israelites. A Negro is not an African. All right? We're not Africans. Right? But you Ethiopians, you Kushites, you're Africans. Right? Anyway. Verse 12. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcast of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. That's really speaking about when we get in the kingdom because we ain't going to be giving each other evil eye. You ain't going to have an altercation with your brother that you labor with. So that's really speaking about when we get in the kingdom. So if you're supposed to be the people of the Bible, and if you're in your, your which they are in their own kingdom, yeah, the kingdom, kingdom of wickedness, Esau, Edom, if you're supposed to be the people of the Bible and they're supposed to be your brothers, why are you afflicting your neighbors that you love? Uh, isn't that in the laws? Let's grab some of the laws. Oh, the scriptures say, love thy neighbors as thyself. But let's grab this one. It's Leviticus Chapter 19, and start at verse 33. And if a stranger, matter of fact, let's start at verse 1. And the Lord spake, and, and the Lord Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai spake, oh yeah, the reason why they don't call upon Yahweh and Yahweh Shai is because the name of the Lord is dreadful among the heathen. And the Lord spake unto Yah. And the Lord Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai, spake unto Moses, saying, Masha, saying, speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel. So this is a message for the Israelites only. That's it. Let's jump down to verse 34 right quick. But the stranger that dwelleth with you shall be unto you as one born among you, and thou shalt love him as thyself. Uh, police brutality. That's not loving your neighbor as yourself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, as the scriptures say. For he were strangers in a land of Egypt. I am the Lord, your power. Right? So you're not supposed to... Uh, uh, um, verse. Did I read verse 33? Let's read verse 33. And if a stranger sojourn with thee in your land, he shall not vex him. What does it mean to vex? To oppress. What? You got what's going down in Israel right now. Police brutality with those Ethiopian Jews or Kushites. Suppress, treat violently, maltreat, vex, do wrong. To treat violently, maltreat. Right? Proud. Do violence. Come on, man. And that word for stranger is gar. And this is what it says. A sojourner, a temporary inhabitant, let's read this one, of foreigners in Israel, though conceded rights. They came there in 1991, Operation Solomon. That's funny, man. That's some funny stuff, man. Well, they're imposters. They don't belong in that land. All right? The scriptures say, love thy neighbor as thyself. Yeah, how was I even quoted that, that, that law? So when we get in the kingdom, we're not going to be oppressing every, uh, um, everybody. We're not going to be starting wars and, 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 and starting trouble with Iran like Israel does. Starting trouble with Iran. Come on, man. There's war in that land. That's all these are violations. You don't call upon Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. That's a violation. Right? You defile the land with blood. That's a violation. You have Pink City Tel Aviv. That's a violation. You call yourself Israeli. That's a violation. You have wars in that land. Violation. You don't keep uh, the, 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 the Sabbaths. Violation. I believe these fake Jews keep it uh, like, like a lot of the uh, fake Israelite camps out there. Friday, sundown, to Saturday. So every single week is Fridays to Saturday. That shit don't even make no sense. Right? That's, man, it's, it's crazy, man. This, this fucking place got to go, man. Plus, there's no such thing as a Friday in the Bible. There's no such thing as a Saturday in the Bible, right? And definitely not no 1948 in the Bible or a bat floor declaration in the Bible. Right? So, this Joel, chapter 3, 
Let's start at verse 2. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. All right, that's speaking about World War III, right? In the Middle East, Jehoshaphat, Yahweh Mashapat, where the Lord is going to judge these different nations or these heathen nations. And will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, the Israelites, whom they have scattered, whom they have scattered among the nations and part of my land. Yeah, didn't Africans sell you to the, to the Portuguese? Didn't these, these Amalekites fund the slave trade? Right? Whom they have scattered among the nations and part of my land. Yeah, right now you got um these uh, Ethiopian Jews there. You got Ishmaelites living in Palestine. And you have um, Edomites living in Israel. Right? Or these Philistine Jews living in Israel too. Did I say that right? Yeah. All right, anyway. And they have cast lots for my people. Right? Gambling, um, auctioning blocks, selling us on cargo slave ships. Uh, or, you know, going to different plantations. Okay, you go here. You're going to separate the family. Edomites did all that. These nations did all that to us. You can't say they didn't because they did. Right? They even tell you in their own documents that they sold us on cargo slave ships. On auctioning blocks. That they put the guns in our community. The drugs in our community. And they have, and they have cast lots for my people. And have given a boyfriend harlot. And sold a girl. And sold. That's slavery man. A girl for wine that they might drink. Verse 4. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, and all the coast of Palestine? Right? Tyre are Hamites. Zidonians are Hamites. Palestinians. Uh, I mean, Palestine were, well, uh, pa was Philistia, Philistines, were Hamites. Right? That word Palestine goes back to the Philistines, which were Hamites. Now, we Israelites were always warring against these Philistines. All right, that so it will be these modern day Africans. That's what I want to bring out. These modern day Africans. Will he render me a recompense? And if he recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? So the Most High is going to 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 put you devils in slavery for what you did to us. Let's continue reading. And these Africans and these Ethiopians did the same exact shit. I mean, they they sold us in a slavery. And they did exactly what Esau did. Right? Sell us on, on cargo slave ships. They sold us out. Verse 5. Because, because he hath taken my silver and my gold and hath carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have he sold unto the Grecians. So you sold the southern and northern kingdom in captivity. Right? To the Grecians, which the modern day Grecians are these Edomites. It ain't speaking about Javan. There's no records that say that the, 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 the Japhites sold the Israelites into captivity and we were uh, 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 in bondage, for, uh, um, uh, you know, under hardcore bondage, underneath no Japhites or the Medes. No. Speaking about um, Esau Edom, that he might remove them far from their border, which we came here on cargo slave ships. Right? Behold, I will raise them out of the place whither he hath sold them. That's speaking about here in America. The Most High is raising us up. He's bringing the tribes together. You can't say that about Israel or these, these Philistine Jews. You can't say that because it doesn't exist. Those tribes are not there. But of course, then again, you got uh, uh, some Israelites that travel to Israel. <laughs> and you know, and it's just, uh, actually, they're, they're actually violating the scriptures. The Most High said he's going to place us there. Travel to Israel, but you're not fulfilling the prophecies by going there. Because the Most High has to put us there, right? After what? World War Three? After the mandating of the, uh, you know, the, the RFID microchip? Come on. So things have to happen first. It's too many violations, man. Check this out. Right? They removed this far from our borders, right? Verse 7. Joel, cha Joel chapter 3 and verse 7. Behold, I will raise them out of the place whither he have sold them and will return your recompense upon your own head. And I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Judah. And they shall sell them to the Sabians, to a people far off, for the Lord hath spoken it. 
So we're going to have our own slave trade. Yeah, you see, we're going to have our own slave trade. And that's in the kingdom. Now, check this out. Verse 9, proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, prepare war, wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up. And that's speaking about World War III. So when we get in the kingdom after World War III, after all the prophecies are fulfilled on this side, we're going to be in the kingdom selling you, we're going to have our own slave trade, selling you Ethiopians. The Zephaniah chapter 2 yeah, you're one of our enemies, you Hamites. Zephaniah chapter 2 and verse, start at verse 10. This show they have for their pride, because they have reproached and magnified themselves against the people of the Lord of hosts. By you going into that land, being airlifted in that land, you're magnifying yourself. You're trying to sit in the, in the seat of, of the Most High. You're trying to go into our land and 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 you try you stole our identity to fit what you think is right. Right? Come on, man. So the verse 11, that's you're exalting yourself. The Lord Yahweh Yahweh Shai will be terrible unto them, for he will famish all the gods of the earth. Literally, he's going to famish. You call yourself a god. He's going to famish you. All you uh, people that claim, like Esau, he claims to be the most high, right? He's going to famish you. You got niggas out here thinking they the most high. The Lord's going to famish you, right? Wait till Jacob's trouble <laughs> hits, man. Let's see if niggas going to be acting tough like the way they do now. Let's see. When you ain't got nothing to eat, when there's home invasions, robberies at an all-time high. Nah. No. For he will famish all the gods of the earth, and men shall worship him, right, in the kingdom. And men shall worship him, right? And they're going to worship Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. We're going to be sitting on thrones in the kingdom. The set thrones of judgment. You're going to have King David sitting, I believe, yeah, uh, Psalms 122 goes into that. You're going to have King David sitting on his throne. Yahweh Shai sitting on his throne in the kingdom. We're going to be sitting on our thrones in the kingdom. We're going to be ruling over these heathen nations. And you're going to bow down and worship Yahweh Shai. Everyone from, from his place, even all the idols of the heathen. That ain't taking place now. Right? We're, we're, nobody. Ain't, ain't, <laughs> we're the only ones worshiping Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai on this side. Right? But the whole world is going to worship Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Verse 12, he Ethiopians, you Cushites. Also, he shall be slain by my sword. Right? And you're going to captivity. Kawashia, Ka Kawashia, Kawashia. Kush, Ethiopian, Kush, their blackness. Right? One of the descendants of Kush. The grandson of Noah through Ham and a member of that nation or people, Cushites, right? Ethiopian, Cushites. So you can't escape your judgment neither, right? This is, um, I already proved my point. I just want to grab a few more precepts and let's wrap it up. Shit, hold on. How was I holding it? Okay. This, uh, Isaiah, oh, Isaiah chapter one. I was right. I was there first. Isaiah chapter one and verse seven. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burnt with fire. Your land, strangers devour it in your presence. This happened when, the, uh, I believe, Sennacherib tried to sack Jerusalem or the southern kingdom a few times and he failed. You had the Babylonians that came like 200 and something years after Sennacherib. Oh, well, well circle, let's say around that time, just to be safe. And they w destroyed the first temple that Solomon built in 586 BC. Right? These are strangers. 
All right, these heathen nations. I believe that word for strangers might be Nakar. Za, za, za war is another name for uh for a uh, heathen nation. It could be applied to heathens as well. Yes, it can. All right. All right. Verse 7, your country is desolate, your cities are burnt with fire, your land, strangers devour it in your presence, and it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. Foreigners, right. Everybody did that. You had uh, Antios Epiphanes IV went into our temple. He defiled the temple. The, the Babylonians destroyed the first temple. The Romans in 70 AD destroyed the second temple. Now you got these, these fake Jews praying to a wailing wall that was partially built by Herod the Great, the Idumean. So that, that place got to go, man. There's too many violations in our land, man. Important trees, important um, just things in it that don't um, grow there no more. Like certain things don't grow in that land no more because you got imposters. The scriptures say a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod, Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 6. Right? This is um, Psalm 79 and verse 1. Let's grab another one. Psalm 79 and verse 1. Now you got these fake Jews in our land, these Ethiopians. Psalm 79 and verse 1. A psalm of Asaph, O Yahweh, Wah, Yahweh, Shai. The heathen, the heathen, not Israelites, are come into thine inheritance. Are come into thine inheritance. Thy holy temple have they defiled. They have laid Jerusalem on heaps. Right? Show you that nobody belongs in that land but us. Nobody belongs in that land but the Israelites. Here's another one. Might as well keep going, right? This is Numbers chapter 35 and verse 33 and verse 34. So he shall not pollute the land wherein he are. Yeah, you can clearly see that over there in Israel. For blood it defileth the land. America, the blood of the Native American Indians are, 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 are crying out to the Heavenly Father till this day. You devils have did a number on our people. For blood it defileth the land. And the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. Here it is that they remove Theodore Roosevelt's statue from the west side of, of Central Park in New York City. But they placed it in a museum in North Dakota. Look that up. Why? Because Esau, every time he looks at that, or somebody or Jake was to walk into that museum in North Dakota and sees, oh, that museum used to be in New York. Oh, there was uh, 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 such controversy about that. That that uh, uh, I said that museum used to be in New York. No, no, that stat that statue used to be in New York. Such controversy about that. You know, Jake would think, oh, that's our oppressor. I have seen service upon horses. We bring out that scriptures plenty of times, right? But they're moving it to North Dakota. Then right down. Uh, down the street from, from that museum, on the west side of the park as well, you have Columbus Circle. You got Christopher Columbus statue still up there. And there's a big globe. Matter of fact, eh, good idea. I had it in mind already. But Lord will I'll do a history video on that. But you had a, you got a big globe right next to Christopher Columbus, right? And I believe there's there's one, yeah, there's one next, uh, on the statue, I believe, and there's another one separate from him, which uh, just proves that what? Uh, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. The world was given into the hand of Esau, Edom. So this, all this is spiritual. Now, Jake might look at that and be like, oh, this is our oppressor. So the memory lives on. You can't do away with that until the Lord uh, brings these devils into captivity. When we get rulership over them. Not now, but these are just reminders that we're still in our captivity. We are yet this day in our captivity. Baruch chapter 3 and verse 8. Right, anyway. And the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but, but by the blood of him that shed it. And we know Esau Edom is a violent man through his witchcraft, through his um, sorceries, and through um, um, him taking um, the world by violence, by, by um, carnally, right? By carnal means. Verse 34, defile not therefore the land which he shall inhabit. Talking about all oh, the 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 uh is all oh, we're finally back home. We return back home to Israel. That land is defiled, man. 
Police brutality, I brought that out already, man. Police brutality, all right? Verse 34, defile not therefore the land which he shall inhabit, wherein I dwell. For I, the Lord, dwell among the children of Israel, and the spirit of the Lord is not in that land. Just like the spirit of the Lord is not in these houses, these harlot houses, these church houses. You ain't going to find the spirit of the Most High dwelling in temples made with hands. Hey, you ain't going to find the spirit of the Most High dwelling in these niggas. They got to be put to death. Oh, that, the Israelite, Israelites believe this or Israelites believe that. And, uh, and uh, man, they be talking mad shit. Talking about, man, we in captivity, man. I'm good here. Esau, eat them, supplies me with my daily necessities, nigga. Nigga. Like Elder Posse Gabar says, you nigga. <laughs> you know, you got to have fun with this truth sometimes, man. I'm stressed the fuck out, man. Hey, look, man. Hey, I ain't scared to admit it. Right? For I, the Lord, dwell among the children of Israel. Yeah, all them tribes ain't there now. But I just want to bring that out. Right? And there's plenty of other scriptures. Man. Plenty of other scriptures. But Shalom. 